I'm curious what your take has been as you've watched uh, the big tech companies testify before Washington and where you believe their responsibilities start and stop when it comes to these issues. Well, I, I think we have an evolution of what's happened online. Uh, in the early days of the Internet, people just typed pretty much whatever they wanted. Uh, and there was no money involved, so that worked out um, well as well as it did. Uh, now you have the situation where uh, social media makes billions of dollars a year for these companies. Uh, advertisements uh, also do. And they're having to do something they hadn't do before, which is to really look inside uh, what they're making all those billions of dollars on. Um, I, I think it's pretty unreasonable to expect that they have no level of responsibility. Uh, historically, uh, other forms of media have cared. They have checked to make sure that uh, ads are basically truthful and fair, at least a, some minimal level standard. So, Nathan, you know, what do you think these companies then should actually do? I mean, their answer is, look, we're tech companies. We are not media companies. But how much farther should they go to police what is happening on their platforms? Well, if you're charging for ads, then uh, and those ads all come from the Russian government or somebody else, and that matters in that context, Sorry, you're charging for the ads. I think it's your responsibility to look into it to some degree. Uh, with respect to the individual speech of people who post things to their Facebook page or tweet them or whatever, uh, there's always a First Amendment issue in that people uh, want to be able to be heard. People have the right to be heard. And of course, I support uh, freedom of speech. But saying they're not media companies doesn't really sound right to me. Uh, they are making a tremendous amount of money uh, on sharing that content very, very broadly. Uh, and even though they're not paying for the content, the content comes from average citizens, I think they have some responsibility. Now, talking about your former stomping ground, Microsoft, I recently sat down with Satya Nadella and we talked about regulation. We've got big tongue big tech companies facing more regulation in Europe. There's a threat of more regulation here in the United States. Take a listen to what Nadella told me about uh, how impending regulation should impact company operations. I mean, I think the most uh, important thing for tech companies uh, is not to worry about uh, any impending regulation. Nathan, how big a threat do you think uh, increased regulation is uh, on pot potentially putting up some boundaries around these companies? Well, it, you have the irony that many big tech companies make billions of dollars on information that its users share with them. And so they're very paranoid about anything that would stop that from occurring or that would increase their costs. And... Uh, to some degree, that's because it used to all be really cheap and free, so they think, well, why should we have extra costs now? So I think some of it is whining, just to be blunt. Um, some of it is uh, more in the nature of saying, well, boy, if we allow this little step to occur, then, oh my God, they might actually kill the goose that's laying the golden egg for us. Right. So uh, before I let you go, you have a new cookbook out about modern bread, modernist bread. You've been mm -hmm. fascinated by food technology for a very long time. What do we need to know about the technology behind bread today? Well, bread is one of the oldest foods of mankind. It's full of enormous lore and legend and belief that some things are correct and other things aren't. Uh, for example, that you must knead your bread. It turns out you don't need to knead. Uh, and a lot of the other traditional ideas about bread turn out not to be true. Uh, so that's what we filled the 2,600 pages of this book with, is history, science, and recipes. Any interesting uh, high-tech or low-tech trends, food trends this holiday season? Uh, well, I think there will be more sous vide turkey and sous vide other things uh, this Thanksgiving than, uh, than ever before. So some of these modern cooking techniques are penetrating out to enormous numbers of people. Um, 
uh, you know, the age old question with turkey is how do you keep the breast from uh, drying out and yet still have the dark meat cooked well? And the best way is separate them. Don't cook them together. Uh, that's true whether you do All it right. sous vide or you do it any other way.